Thank you so much and uh, good morning everyone uh, once again. Uh, I'd like to welcome all my panelists and co-speakers here on a warm or a warm welcome on a chilly daily morning uh, because most of them have been traveling from outside so uh, it's not so so pleasant or warm for them but uh, and uh, would like to just give you an introduction in terms of what we are going to speak today about we are going to take forward the discussion on how the AI uh, the artificial intelligence is changing the roles of CXOs and what is it that they need to be cognizant of but before I do that let me start with introducing my co-speakers uh, here on the dais with me uh, in, in no particular order, uh, please welcome Hasit Trivedi, CTO of Digital Technologies and Global Head for AI Tech Mahindra. Hasit is a seasoned technocrat with over 25 years of experience in technology business with industry recognition as a leading voice in the field of artificial intelligence. A tech evangelist with a wide variety of experience in running businesses in the niche technology area like artificial intelligence, intelligent automation, cloud, IoT, etc. He has uh, played a key role in technology innovation, client delivery, product management, product engineering, and building units from scratch. Uh, next on the uh, dais, we have uh, Dr. Marco Maheshal, uh, CEO Connected, Netherlands. Uh, Dr. Maheshal uh, connects, advises, and supervises organizations in uh, positioning and repositioning, cultural changes, change processes, change communications, environmental management. Uh, communication issues, press and representations, PR and new challenges. Uh, Marco is an international speaker in the area of technology, smart cities, smart mobility, smart water and smart energy. Uh, next on the panel we have uh, Odeyan Kanade. Uh, he is CEO for uh, Onerix Labs. I pronounce it right? Okay. Uh, Odeyan is an expert in inventing novel solutions to engineering problems. He specializes in applied and Computational mathematics. Currently, he's leading a team of research scientists in, and inventors at Onrix Labs. Onrix Labs invents novel technology solutions using formidable skills in applied computational mathematics coupled with its exploratory multidisciplinary solution engineering. Next, we have uh, Mr. Amit Luthra, Managing Director, India, Lenovo ISG. Amit is a sales and marketing professional with proven uh, expertise in formulating, developing, and implementing yearly business strategies to ensure attainment of business goals. He has expertise in data center technologies like virtualization, cloud storage, compute and networking platforms. His specialties include sales and marketing, business strategy and execution, team building and leadership, key account management, etc. Uh, last but definitely not uh, least, uh, on the uh, dais we have uh, Mr. Sanjay Deshmukh, COO Findability Sciences. Uh, Sanjay is the Chief Operating Officer, Findability Sciences, uh, where he brings over 25 years of experience in finance and technology, uh, uh, optimizing the, and the innovation and leadership that form the bedrock of Findability Sciences. He spearheads global delivery, ensuring the seamless integration of our cutting-edge technology solutions and unmatched customer satisfaction. He is also responsible for continuously guiding uh, the clients through their comprehensive AI transformation journey from strategy to execution. I once again welcome all the panelists on uh, Dias and uh, look forward to having a very engaging uh, discussion. Uh, and without any further ado, let's start on what we are here to discuss today. And I would like to start that with a quote from uh, uh, Stephen Polyak, uh, which says that, you know, before we work on artificial intelligence, let's do something about uh, natural stupidity. But uh, Today, we'll not be talking about natural stupidity because I'm not sure if how much we can address that, honestly speaking. But on a serious note, um, yeah, artificial intelligence is not a substitute for any of the human intelligence. And let me be very, very clear and candid on that. It is just a tool to amplify human creativity and ingenuity. AI is not just one technology, but actually it's a combination of tools and techniques which make human work possible, easier, and can replicate what we can do in a much more efficient uh, manner, taking away the hu human error part of it. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, first used in 1956, AI was a term uh, that has come a long way and is close to making some of these uh, you know, uh, fiction and entertainment uh, true uh, that we've been, uh, uh, that uh, I, I don't know, we as kids, at least I as kids have gone through lives of giant robots and terminator series 
and uh, that that just might be coming true uh, leaving this scary part part outside so uh, there are a lot of use cases of ai there are there is a lot of ai that has is being used as we speak there is a lot of ai that has potential to change the way we work the way industry operates the way smart cities operate and um, it 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 has usage in every sector be it water urban uh, science and technology uh, media telecom education and skilling health uh, you name it and ai has a you know very specific role to play uh, in coming days so uh, but you know before we go further on uh, discussing the current role of ai in uh, corporates or any large organization including government and how the cxos are going to uh, you know <clears throat> will have to change the way they uh, look at it or the way they work let me just uh, you know uh, put to rest some of the myths or some of the uh, misconceptions about ai that uh, generally we have and um, I was talking to Odian earlier today. You know, I personally feel that AI is like a game of golf. Everybody wants to play because it's a game of elite, but hardly anybody understands what golf is or what it entails to play a golf. Uh, so, without any further ado, uh, let me uh, bring in um, Odian and Dr. Uh, Mahishal uh, Postat and share their views on some of the misconception and about uh, AI and what reality is. So, Odian, you being the an entrepreneur and you interact with a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs as well what is your experience uh, in some of the challenges that you face when you explain ai to the world and especially to your customers and what is the uh, most common misconceptions and how are they taken care of Martin. well thank you for your question okay. um so i'm from amsterdam from the netherlands traveling here so um great country to be here in uh, in india um and i quite use quite a lot to chip gbt so when it was new year's day i asked chip gbt how was your uh, well happy new year and how are you feeling and the answer of the chip gbt was i cannot comply with this question so we're not there yet in the human uh, in the human factor in that uh, in that way so your question basically is about is it a threat or is it not a threat to the ai um, and that i think that's a good question and people who know me a little bit and saw me last year i'm also a little bit about interaction so i want to ask the audience if they think that things like chat dbg or ai is going to be a threat or not so I will ask you please to stand up as an audience so we can have a little bit of a game um, and ask you a couple of questions. Please rise. Thank you very much for your collaboration. That's also very nice to do. Otherwise, everybody is sitting and I'm standing here. So the question is, do you think that AI is a threat to world at this moment? If you think, yes, it's going to be your threat, um, you can stay put. And if you say, no, it's going to be great AI in the next couple of years, in the next couple of decades, you can sit down. So it's going to be your threat. Sorry? <laughs> yes, it is, it is about that. Yeah, so one, two, three, four people, so there is from the audience, uh, the answer to the questions. Very, thank you very much for complying with this uh, question. Because the basis of AI and machine learning are people, because at the end of the day, people are programming the different kind of machine learnings. It's us who are programming it or not. So I got a couple of projects I've done for different kind of municipalities uh, in the area of AI. And my question was, I want to have a visualization of for the different kind of policy makers and decision makers of all the different kind of papers they have and to have a visualization what is going to be the impact of different kind of mobility visions different kind of executing the mobility visions different kinds of subjects for the city and i've added also the human factor into that area into that equation programming that starts with people because we have to program it 
and have different kind of areas and different kind of values bringing on for the equation to have the visualization of it. So in my idea is going to help the different kind of areas uh, to have a visualization and based on that making the different kind of decisions. Um, but we have to be careful with AI also. Uh, but the baseline to do that are people and we have to have different kind of areas in that. So the other thing is that AI is already in our lives. So I have a daughter and I have a great mug, a coffee mug I really like, but she broke it and I didn't know that she broke it. So when I was looking at different kind of online newspapers, I get all the ads of my, it's a Garfield mock. Uh, sorry, I'm a little bit old, but I really like that cartoon Garfield. So I was, suddenly I get all the different kind of Garfield mocks uh, uh, to buy. And then I find out that my daughter, she was already uh, broken it and she was sorry. I said, did you break my Garfield mock? And she said, yes. So because of the ads I, of the Garfield mock, AI is already implemented in different kind of areas in our common life. So it's not the question, is it good, is it bad, is it, it is already here. And it's pe us people who have to have a look at it uh, and be on the baseline of that. Thanks, Marco. I think <clears throat> that's a, a good way to keep people warm as well and keep them interactive. But uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that uh, details and uh, completely agree that uh, I, whether we like it or not, but AI is there and we, we better make the best of it. Uh, coming back to the original part, uh, or then uh, what are some of the uh, in challenges that you faced and what are some misconceptions and uh, let's, let's create them out. Yeah, uh, quickly, two things I would hope people remember more. One is that uh, AI is more than just the flavor of the month. Um, we all love chat GPT, but to paraphrase your earlier comment, chat GPT is artificial intelligence trained on human stupidity. <laughs> so, I mean, it's trained on Twitter data and as bad as we are, we know we are worse on Twitter. So, <laughs> right. And True. then you're trying to get it to do extremely intelligent things, which it sometimes can and sometimes does what Marco just said. So there are already techniques that you can mix together with chat GPT like techniques which produce better results and so you have to mix various kinds of computational mathematical algorithms with chat GPT or transformer like techniques to get better results that's one thing I hope people remember which brings me to my second point that I hope people remember is that AI may be automation but it's not automatic very well said it's not easy to create AI. AI may save us, pro you know, productive hours, may give us more productivity, but it's not easy to create. And so, you know, we have to work with the right expertise, with the right teams. We have to bring together the correct data and the correct algorithms and correct people to produce useful AI. So it's not, it, you, you can't just, you know, write three lines and get a workable, real industrial solution. So I hope these are two things people remember. Completely agree. Thank you so much. And yes, uh, but yeah, uh, also just to add on to it, uh, even if you like write 3000 lines and don't write uh, them properly, uh, all we will be ending up doing is creating another Skynet and have a judgment day. So um, yeah, definitely um, is there. And uh, but see, uh, this has been a very great revolution. Uh, every good thing has happening. But uh, if we go back to our Indian scriptures and mythological stories as well, uh, there's a phrase that goes that, you know, every good, when it lives its lives and or if we have too much of it, it turns into evil. So uh, just would like to invite uh, Hasith here and uh, have your inputs in terms of is AI going to be uh, evil? Yes or no? Uh, you know, or, or will become evil? Uh, is it necessary evil? Will we be able to live with it or uh, we will not be able to live with it? Hazrat uh, views. I think um, the term evil is too harsh for technology like AI, I would say. Um, 
I think we have seen such kind of technology which has a duality of extraordinary capabilities and also extraordinary dangerous also correct we have seen the chemical and pharma industry which can be extremely dangerous correct so for example chloroforms of the world aspirins of the world or valiums of the world are the life saving also life threatening also but we always see it is a positive enabler for our society be it an another example which is closest comes in my mind is nuclear technology right lot of nuclear power can can do a great to humans but it is dangerous also but net humans are able to resolve the negative part and manage it very effectively today you go and take up a pill without any doubt correct uh, it can be cyanide inside it but never happens correct so humans have mechanics to control any evil part of the new technologies and uh, AI is also some of that thing. So, uh, I think that we should not be linking AI to something like evil, which is which is very negative connotation. Uh, I think it's a technology which allows you to be more productive. It solves your complex problem. At times, it mutes your aspiration as well. Correct. For example, I am such. I am not a good painter. I never think that I can draw any meaningful uh, uh, creature. But with AI. I, I can meet that aspiration, correct? I, I can ask AI to create. I have the power of imagination. I can, I can tell the AI the what kind of landscape I need, what kind of object I need, what kind of uh, uh, other colors I need, kind of thing. And I can become a painter. So, it is incredible technology which allows you to be more productive, solve your complex problem like a drug discoveries or a diag- disease diagnosis and creating vaccines, as powerful as that, and make you aspirational to become artist as well there is such a powerful technologies are rare we are lucky to have having seen these kind of technologies so certainly it's not an evil uh, and humans are greedy species we are very greedy species correct so any technologies or any equipments which makes you lazy it's very easily adopted by humans correct we we would love to be lazy, like we lazy and ai will make us productive and solve complex problem will become lazy and we are greedy and thus we consume more and more and productivity improvement leads to more consumption and that that's why the ai will lead to the multiplier effect on gdp how somebody say that the ai will lead to the gdp because we will consume more as a human being and our greed will never satisfied and thus job will continue to be there and it's a perfect thing for human to have this kind of technology in hand so certainly i see a net positive impact of ai in a mankind and we are lucky to see that this change coming in our era will consume and more and more we see ai becoming invisible to us it's better for us today you are using alexas without knowing it's an ai correct in your camera you are getting tagged automatically it's ai you don't know even about that thing you are able to read the magazines and novels through amazon audibles you don't know about ai so i think more it becomes invisible it's a it's a it's a maturity of the technology correct and i think that it is happening at a rapid pace and we should welcome it with a warm this thing and i think i would say that's a great asset for mankind to have this kind of technology in, in this time sure so thank you so much so no more calling ai as an evil for sure and uh, no more addressing uh, ai as a bad guy it's a good thing to happen is the protagonist of the uh, future so let, let's take it forward sure I agree with you so um, and on a serious note uh, definitely as uh, hasad ali lagdin ke mentioned uh, ai has already started to make an impact and help all our businesses uh, deliver business outcomes in lot more efficient way a uh, lot more lot, lot faster i would say and uh, with very less manual intervention if i may say so so also ab uh, the ability of ai to learn from the past data uh, machine learning as we refer to to learn from the past data and then help uh, all the stakeholders you know learn from that experience that we have had uh is phenomenal we were uh, on a session yesterday we were talking about the uh, content creation for the ott and how the content is being curated for uh, personalized for every viewer for every category of viewer 
for every category of geography is tremendous and without ai i don't think uh, anybody will be able to do that that effectively so uh, definitely uh, we, we've established that it's a boon for all of us so uh, uh, sanjay uh, if i may come to you and you know uh, you work extensively in solving uh, business challenges uh, for your customers you uh, help them achieve the customer service and customer satisfaction using uh, some of the ai technologies so uh, let me let have your views on how uh, you know ai is helping achieve the business outcomes and uh, how is it making a difference in the uh, current scenario so you know ai whether you like it or not it is here and um, arco just conducted a poll and uh, you know most people here in this room seem to welcome ai and not perceiving it as threat or evil which is a good thing uh, now from a cxo point of view uh, ai has already become vital and indispensable tool for productivity improvement uh, so there are many examples of that we work with many clients to use ai to solve their business uh, transformation problem so there are many advantages of ai one is uh, you know ai has been around for long time but for the past couple of years we have generative ai so with generative ai and the prior version of it the discriminative ai it has become more holistic to solve a wide variety of enterprise ai problems both for small medium and large enterprises so first of all you know generative ai has made it very accessible you know uh, there has been a democratization of uh, ai which has resulted in you know it becoming accessible to ceos to the ordinary users uh, for example i'll give an example of uh, what we call as natural language query so all the business uh, reports you know earlier ceos have been getting it through bi dashboards but now we have developed a chat based interface where the llm the generative ai can query a very complex database and you know through a chat based interface provide an answer on whatsapp for example so this has become very very accessible and the second advantage is that it is pre trained so you know you are of course you have to still train it in your domain or your enterprise data but at least it is pre trained so that also improves the efficiency a lot uh, so we have also developed applied it for the small business uh, you know they can get the valuation of their businesses but they also can get a large number of services you know they can get information about the banks or insurance or what kind of loans to take or insurance policies etc and uh, you know uh, and there are many other services such as generating employee agreements or you know vendor agreements etc so by combining the discriminative ai generative ai there are uh, you know there is a huge amount of jump in productivity automation and improvement so i think ai is really indispensable for cxos and it should be embraced without any doubt sure so uh, thanks for that and completely agree as hasit also mentioned it has to be as invisible as possible but at the same time giving you what you ask for but in your experience and i'll ask you the same thing what i was asking uh, odian that in your experience Uh, what is some of the challenges that you have faced uh, while uh, you know customers demanding for ai uh, and uh, because i have seen uh, customers uh, coming in and saying i want ai to be implemented in my organization and when i ask what do you want to achieve out of it they don't have a clue they 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 want uh, ai to be there because uh, as udyan said that's the flavor of the month and everybody wants it but hardly people know what exactly is that they want to derive out of uh, implementation of ai so uh, if you've had some experiences of similar kinds and how you've uh, taken care of it i think uh, there are challenges in implementing ai but first thing is you know as a ai practitioner what we have to understand is what is the business problem that they are trying to solve you know and then converting that business problem into a problem statement into a data science problem statement okay so that is when you really start exploring as to what is feasible using ai and some of the challenges that we have faced in implementing when it comes to customer implementation is the availability of data in the right form 
so availability of the data the history of the data how it has been organized and any business also operates not only by itself but in the ecosystem so there is external data which we call as white data which affects the ai outcomes so that is also very important to gather and get uh, in the advanced economies such as us uh, or europe uh, i think the external data is more organized and available but when it comes to less developed economies the data availability can be a challenge and many organizers organizations do not yet have a data culture to really harness it as uh, you know as an asset which is very very valuable and that's the kind of, kind of fundamental or foundational to any proper ai implementation and really get benefit out of it i think that's uh, one of the challenges second is also the culture uh, which is uh, you know that, that has to come from the top management that they want to adopt ai and also they need to propagate it to their next levels and their next levels which is also very important uh, for adopting enterprise ai but i think with uh, you know after the generative ai there is much more awareness and uh, you know really a drive to see what kind of enterprise ai problems can be solved and to adopt it as fast as possible because there is also the fomo or fear of missing out so everybody wants to adopt ai and that's a good thing uh, you know at least that level of resistance is now much reduced i would say excellent yeah no sir so these are very good uh, points could i add two more problems i yes. think that uh, we are facing in general uh, one is i think our uh, procurement systems whether in corporate or in the government are not really made to be able to you know uh, procure and develop and integrate ai systems and that we don't really know how to evaluate how to compare how to uh, you know how to get the correct system that works for us it's almost as if on the procurement side you should have a staff statistician but even on the ai side you don't have a staff statistician many a times so right so so this is something that we really have to work hard on right you know for example just a simple example many companies or governments will say here is our data tell us what you can do with it but if your ai is trained on the published data it will always work great on the published data the real question is how it how does it work on a different data set but most of the time we are not thinking of this and there are hundreds of problems that our procurement systems have not adjusted to yet and that is one challenge and i and we really have to solve this and really have to teach this to each other uh, thoroughly second problem i uh, would like to point out is uh, while developing and procuring ai systems have we thought about how ai will work in symbiosis with our teams because if we don't think of that then that ai tries to replace the team but then the ai does something wrong when the ai does something wrong the team says this is not working let's turn it off and so then things work for the first 3 months then they get turned off right like the amazing adaptive traffic signals in various cities which work for 3 months then they get turned off because they are doing something bad so can we think of symbiotic systems where ai and humans work together and did we think about that from the beginning is another challenge so just hold on to that thought of uh, you know people part of it uh, we'll just come back to it but taking cue from what you just said about uh, all the uh, let's say stakeholders of a business working in tandem uh, towards uh, you know achieving the uh, desired outcome using ai Uh, so I'll uh, just come to uh, Amit on that. That you know, you worked uh, long enough, um, you know, on, on, at a CXO level now, and uh, you've had multiple interactions so with the uh, all kind of stakeholders, internal and external. And um, how difficult or easy it is to bring synergy between the business team and the technology team. and uh, what is it that cxo uh, for today would need to uh, either continue doing or change doing uh, when we talk about uh, getting an ai kind of a you know large uh, uh, platform integrated into a business specifically from uh, if you look at it from the commercial side as uh, udayan bhai rightly said 
the investments at least as of today uh, on the ai systems are huge and the roi is uh, are not immediate it takes time for roi to be delivered to the business so how do we ensure that uh, cxos or what what change the cxos needs to bring so that the business teams and the technology teams work in harmony and can achieve the uh, desired technology as well as the business outcomes so it's a very important thing to realize that uh, artificial intelligence is not only changing the way we live to today but it is also changing the way businesses are done and the adoption of ai if you go back and see is at an ever increasing pace in some form or shape i would say ai was prevailing in in our day to day lives or in our businesses right it's just that like like you mentioned it was silent now it is evident and again most organizations that have been phenomenally successful in adopting ai are the ones who had clear goal on what am i going to use it for you need to have an end point or end objective in mind it cannot be the game of goal for it cannot be hash me to right that my competitor is deploying or some particular team is deploying ai i also want to actually go and deploy ai without knowing what is the business outcome of it so organizations and cxos who have been fairly fairly successful in leveraging the power of ai are the ones who know what is the end business outcome that needs to be driven i have actually seen uh, few organizations what they do is they actually form a task force now the task force includes data scientists includes it experts includes business analysts right so it, the task force cuts across various functions of the organization because you need to leverage a technology to drive a business outcome eventually to keep it very simple you are leveraging some form in shape technology to drive a business outcome now the technology teams the business teams and the strategy teams and all other teams need to be part of the task force because that's when you can contribute and get a an real outcome of any ai program cxos that have done them taking all the stakeholders uh, together have been pretty successful so that is one thing which i have seen so how do we get all the stakeholders together it is important to know what are what is that you want to drive right it cannot be like a decade back or a, i would say 15 years back dyod was the big thing just right where i actually met an cxo he said look i am the first one to do dyod i asked him what i am giving mail access on mobile to any and every device to any and every employee it cannot be dyod right so you have to be actually be very clear what is this artificial intelligence project initiative is going to help the business is it going to acquire customers is it going to bring fraud down is it going to improve my uh, customer satisfaction it is going to improve my employee satisfaction what is it going to do have that business objective kpi in place then take the right stakeholders and then be successful on it. excellent i think uh, that that's very pertinent to uh, know what exactly what are you driving towards and then have all the stakeholders work in tandem or work together so that we are not just wasting time money energy resources but are actually trying to get what we want to do out of it um, uh, perfect and um, coming back to uh, what you were saying on the people front uh, you know uh, there there is a i would say a misconception or there is a fear with lot of people and i think some of them were standing at the end of uh, what you said uh, yeah uh, on uh, will ai change the job scenarios going forward and if yes in what manner will that be a positive change or will that be a change where um, i might stand to lose a job uh, because of ai being uh, implemented uh, let's say end to end in any of the Uh, businesses so is that uh, uh, what kind of uh, changes does it bring to job scenario and is that is there any uh, cause of concern that we should be aware of uh, marco well depends on the amount of money you will get to be replaced by a robot uh, maybe you will be happy on a on a very nice island um but it's this this question is of all ages when we look at the industrial revolution people had also uh, the same kind of questions but let's look at the global scale because india is growing in the number of people so that's great but it's one of the few countries 
that is at this moment growing in people. Europe is declining at this moment, so there are less uh, people born and more people are going to die. So we got a labor problem uh, within Europe. And I think that AI and also robot, uh, robots will change the future because different kind of areas of opportunities of jobs will be replaced by robots. It's already happening. Uh, when I was out in the Netherlands and went to a restaurant, it was fully robotized. So from the start I entered in, I could uh, get in, I get a QR code, I got my lunch, there was a robot bringing in my lunch, there were only people uh, at the kitchen making the lunch, and I could pay and go. I was in and out in 20, 30 minutes. So for a business person to have like a quick lunch, this is great to have it. In that discussion with the different kind of people who are monitoring the robot, if it's going well or not, it's a duality uh, in that. So I asked the question, do you like the robot or not? Because you're waitering uh, a little bit or looking uh, and do you feel threatened? Yes and no. Yes, it's easier and they can talk to the clients more and have more relationship. On the other hand, you also want to do uh, uh, stuff as people and as a person. So I think it will help and it will fix the European uh, problems at this moment. Having two little people doing jobs at this moment. Uh, and on the other hand, um, people who are in those jobs they feel, well, let's say, um, a little bit scared. What to do next? What is the next step for me if I'm going to be replaced and in which order am I going to be replaced? The other thing is that it cre also creates new jobs uh, and new businesses and new different kind of business models. So that will be part of the equation in the next uh, couple of years to find out what the new jobs are going to be and uh, how to reinvent them and get to the next stage uh, of that. So, yeah, it's a duality. Uh, but I don't think that you are going to ask people who are living in the industrial revolution that could figure out internet and think about it was already there and think uh, in, in that area. So, and also we are going, this is the last point, we are going to be a little bit scared of all the science fiction movies which are really your door and fantasy movies about AI and robots um, uh, in that area. So we're also indoctrinated with different kind of images and movies. What's the future is going to be like? Sure, but uh, just continuing to the example that you gave. Uh, in, the, in that restaurant, uh, you still needed human beings to prepare the food, one. Yes. And secondly, to maintain those robots, yes. to create those robots, you still need people. Yes, to watch out that they are not hitting a table. Yeah, exactly. So uh, from that perspective, I don't think uh, there's anything uh, negative that's going to happen in my personal perception. Sure. But um, uh, then coming back to you. Um, so uh, as Marco gave the example of Europe, let's say uh, it's a very different ball game in Europe because uh, if you take countries like France, they are struggling uh, for a challenge of less population, less working population. But in India, the ball game is very, very different. We have huge population and then uh, how do you look at it from the Indian perspective? Udin. Um So, uh, see, uh, people say that um, now in the future, you have to be an expert in the AI, in AI. I would say that now, from now on in the future, you have to be expert at something that is not AI. Because if you are not an expert at something that is not AI, then AI is replacing you. Right? Like think about it. Chat GPT makes the expert marketer more productive. It makes the novice marketer worse. Right? Um, GitHub Copilot makes the expert programmer more productive, makes the novice programmer worse. They can't can't do anything now. Okay, so you have to be. I mean, you as in the future job seeker has to be great at something not AI, and I think that's the change that is going to come. 
so if i can cook food my future is secure but you have to and cook restaurant- great food yeah <laughs> excellent not like me excellent excellent so um uh, you know very well said and uh, yes uh, there is very different uh, you know viewpoint that we have uh, from global perspective and uh, from india perspective uh, if i may say so uh, but uh, the pertinent question again comes back uh, fine we have ai it's good it's bad uh it's excellent uh we have lot of uh implementations uh, that uh, can be done but um the pertinent part again is and um, i'll request hasip and then uh, sanjay to uh, share the views in terms of what is it that we need to change as we are looking at uh, today's you know discussion and at cxo level or at any organization level let's let it be uh, government bureaucracy uh to start with or a uh, you know a chairman of an organization How, what is it that we need to change and what is the future looking like for uh, those uh, organizations specifically from uh, the point of view of productivity and uh, commercial aspect please so i think uh, let's understand what macro changes are happening around us one of the things which will happen around us is that overall knowledge quotient of this our planet earth will increase multifold why it will increase for example a dutch content of knowledge is not accessible to the people in india because who understand certain language so language is a barrier for the knowledge with ai this language barrier goes away and thus content is available in any form and language of your choice and thus the overall knowledge of individuals and the planet earth will increase significantly and thus there is a business opportunity to convert this knowledge artifacts into various form factors so that is one big phenomena macro phenomena which will last for next one decade and and because of which significant productivity improvement innovations will happen because the lot of knowledge exists in sanskrit dutch japanese italy or punjabis or gujaratis or tamilians of the world correct and this is democratized now everybody has an access to the knowledge so that is big business opportunity second opportunity is around the whole conversation see today the again the language is the key plays a key role in convert making your effective conversation again the language barrier is gone i i am being a gujarati can speak with somebody in audience in punjabi without knowing the language and this will suddenly change the definition of education or literacy because scripting is a core to the literacy today suddenly scripting is not the important thing as long as you know your language speaking language and potentially voice become a will become a universal ui for human to communicate with other human correct not the writing so that is a big opportunity as well as the socio economic changes which will happening third is the consumer we will say see arts everywhere in our communication so today we have in whatsapp or anything we play with the emojis we play with mem- memes correct and which is fixed with the generative ai you will create on fly emojis of your choice so arts will be fun around us and people will use it liberally everybody will become an artist of some form and shape so that is the way the the overall changes will happen in our communication will happen fourth and i am telling each of this is business opportunity as well one is of course it's a larger changes is happening earlier the personal secretaries are available only to the cxos of the world now every individual will have a personal secretary i will have personal secretary for coding somebody will have personal secretary for the creation of the blogs somebody will have personal secretary to create creation of songs somebody will have personal creation of recipes so everybody has a personal secretary no no one can complain now that i don't have a secretary so ai is the biggest secretary for each one of you and there is a enough business to create the secretaries correct so all the experts of the art art marketing recipes has a big job available to train machines to create their mimics and the fifth 
biggest use case is a fake narrative and deep fakes itself correct which is dangerous part of it the velocity in which this fake narrative will be created is will be unprecedented it will be creating chaos in the society the politicians terrorist and all kind of negative elements in the world will create use it in such a rapid manner see it's always easy for a insane person to use technology in a widespread manner because they don't have to worry about repercussion a sane person uses technology with care with worry and thus the ai usage by the regular people will be very careful and slow in adoption while the people who are insane will use the technology in rapid manner and that is the biggest risk of mankind today and how do we address is something which is challenging for us uh, and that's where i think the society government technologies every has everyone has to come together to this last use cases which is danger to the society has to, how do we protect that piece is something again a business excellent uh sanjay your quick views on that and then yes i think uh, i'll give you two examples uh, of uh, use of ai so which we are our uh, actual examples so we work with uh, daikin in uh, united states so they are a big air conditioner manufacturer and you know every business or every human being wants the ability to predict what is going to happen in the future so in a supply chain application you know they really have to predict as to what is the quantity of their various products there are more than 50 varieties of products in 250 different locations where what quantity is going to be demanded at what point in time and arrange to supply that inventory at that right location so that they're not missing out any business that they're likely to get as well as they're not having surpluses which is not getting sold so we uh, so ai enables that which we have done and they have a huge saving as a result of uh, that so i think from a productivity point of view uh, ai is very very important to really predict what is going to happen in the future the other example which is a different example which is from a legal industry where uh, you know using the generative ai uh, whenever uh, the lawyer gets a new case he needs to do a lot of research you know he needs to have the knowledge of law he wants to query the data and you know he then wants to do research due diligence for example if it is a merger and acquisition kind of a situation where you know you are they have tons of documents from the two merging companies to be analyzed very quickly right because you have to be uh, very productive and then generate briefs drafts notices so these are the things which are you know being enabled and which we are doing for our clients uh, in the legal industry so i think it is extremely practical application of uh, you know bringing productivity and uh, automation with good amount of accuracy as well as data security so these are the things which ai is able to enable great thanks sanjay uh, so i think um, <clears throat> before we wrap it up uh, a quick few is uh, amit uh, um, uh, from your side in terms of you know uh, what is it that you see as a future uh, of uh, ai uh, coming in and what are the future trends uh, looking like the future for ai is definitely ai for all right so in in any shape form business uh, even personally if you go back and see the way we will start playing living operating devices ai is going to be in each and every form of our lives for sure so, so future for ai is ai for all i think we all know the advantages of what it can bring into our lives into the businesses but there are some potential uh, i would say things right which like deep fake and all which needs to be completely uh, taken care and that's where the ethics element of ai needs to come in right what is what is the ethics element in doing an ai project that is one thing which i think corporates will start having and social responsibility or communities will start having a social responsibility on bringing in the ethics aspect of ai as well technology is there technology is there to support any kind of any kind of uh, unimaginable uh, request also which is there right today if you go back we get to hear customers want to do ai right when the data is created at the edge itself at the shop floor itself at the branch itself technology is there technology is there to support but i think that framework of ethics and security is the second important aspect is the 
redefining phase which will make these technologies most robust very very important point of ensuring that we have uh, regulations around it and we till the time we put boundaries and we stay within those boundaries i think very very useful uh, quickly uh, within your last views on what is it that we need uh i will speak about the medium to long term future uh see uh, linguistic ability is clearly new this is this is unprecedented it's clearly something new that computers are now able to do but if you think about how they are doing it right now see what chat gpt and similar technologies are trying to do is you, so there is understanding of language then there is memory recall then there is logic then there is creativity and then there is generation of language but this pipeline is not a pipeline in chat gpt it's just this big large matrix multiplication and you hear about like 7 billion parameters no no 100 billion parameters literally 100 billion numbers are doing a mixture of all of this without telling us which number is doing what right there's no way to separate it. it's all a big black box i think what will happen in the future not not two months in the future years into the future is we will figure out how this is happening and we will be able to separate out these stages and that's very important and imperative right because we already have better technologies for many of these stages memory is already a solved problem logic is already a solved problem and much better than chat gpt does it right and if we could separate it out then it would be beautiful because then at that stage of te- technology we will just have an understanding component and all that it would mean is that hey computers understand language and that's not scary a computer which behaves like a computer except it understands what i'm saying is not as scary as a computer that might do anything might say anything might get it right might go completely haywire and so then you know whether it's evil whether it is scary whether we should worry about it these issues will reduce a lot in the future and i can tell you examples of other technologies which have got it gone exactly in this direction where black box technologies but then the theory was understood and then it turned out that we could create better and better technologies i think the same is going to happen and then it would be you know what what he said that it would be just linguistic user interface to a computer i think that's the future so uh, we keep it uh, within the boundaries and we know what we want exactly so that we can make ai use that's that's what it is last quick thoughts marco so what you are saying is in a way that people are going to be their own ia to learn to machine learning in the next couple of years great all right uh thank you so much um uh everyone uh i think uh so my takeaway or my uh conclusion or my summary on this is that chat uh sorry uh, the ai is here to stay that is what we are looking at uh no it's not uh, evil uh there's not going to be another judgment day or another cyber nine systems uh creating uh, uh you know monsters but at the same time uh, we need to ensure that cxos have ai on their agenda and they work with businesses they work collaboratively in a specific direction for a specific output and within a specific boundary uh to make this a uh, very very um, uh, you know successful and uh, effective so um i think that is uh, all we have for uh, today uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, i would like to thank uh, all my co speakers uh, and we are open for any questions uh, if we have time hello hello can i be heard yes log in yes i'm rakesh sharma i run a technology company no code uh, technology and uh, <clears throat> been a startup entrepreneur for last three startups never realized that by the time i actually create something i would reach an a time when ai would almost take over which i thought would be my fourth startup so now i am in a fix now that i have created something which was in a non ai environment or non environment non ai years and reached a point where there is totally about ai and how we have connecting 
and i think that's why i stayed on for this theme, for this topic about what is our role going forward and the realization that i got from this is that we have to connect something that already exists and see the relevance of what's coming up in the future now what came about from from one of the one of the points that was raised that a task force can be created but the point is at the end of the day all the task force members are as knowledgeable or as not knowledgeable about what's coming so so would that actually change what we want to do that is number 1 number 2 is that yes there is fear because we don't know what the capabilities of ai is and today i don't know what i need to attach with my product so that because the buzzword is like ai is everywhere it's here to stay rakesh you're not doing anything on ai what is your product doing you know i I've, i've been talking working with a lot of lot of large companies now the point is that how it is enabled in the product that i have made and that's where the challenge that i am facing we have created solution it has come about from college students by the way so what i realized from my that my team will not understand what i want from ai i went to the college quietly without telling my hr picked up few youngsters in third year fourth year and said look this is what i have done what are what are your ideas so that i could create some kind of a small model to show to my team so that i could trigger that thought but they are now matured guys to take it to the next level and that's how for us the changes have happened so so is that something that the team has to say about this kind of a convergence that we have to bring between an old existing technology i call it no code it was supposedly very very ahead in the future but that has to be enabled by what is uh, likely to come sure guys thank you so much for that so if i can summarize your question you want to know how do we enable non technology people and create that core team which understand what is required uh from uh let's an ai implementation uh no take up um no code technologies will move towards linguistic based no code technology and this is going to be doable in bits and pieces right now and if what i am saying comes out to be true then over the next like 5 or 10 years it's going to be more and more do- doable so i would i would suggest that it's not as if the sky is falling and everything you did is meaningless but you will have to track these changes and keep abreast with it right i mean we all say things are going to be faster than they are right i mean in 2008 they said that uh, self driving cars are going to be there right at that moment also i said that they are going to be there in 20 years you'll see it's going to be true so you know yes all of this is coming but you know and but it's not that no code is completely dead there will be a mixture right amit uh, yeah okay hazrat no i think if we just understand i think you being an entrepreneur you would understand very well correct there is something called in uh, it and product business there is system of transactions system of intelligence and system of experience i think uh, uh, legacy products typically has spent more money on system of transactions um, and i think uh, right way going forward will be to spend more money on system of experience and intelligence in your context you would figure out what it means for your customers that what intelligence they are seeking and what kind of experience they are seeking i think as long as you are uh, have a good understanding of that piece you can use ai in the context of that and see that if you can make investment in these two layers and system of transaction is taken for granted correct so now it has to be stabilized uh, and it's a, it's a it's a the focus is to shift on the experience and intelligence part and in your domain your context in your customer you are the best person to judge what it is means to that thing yep excuse me. hello uh, i'll just finish my question till then quickly right so hi uh, my name is polkit actually uh, just wanted to understand or uh, this is this is a uh, question out of curiosity so the a lot of ai available to public at large is basically uh, llm models uh, that are giving a uh, decision based on previous data that they already have right which a uh, few people in the tech industry also term as soft ai uh, the 
the uh, second part of AI where decision making will prevail through those models is still yet not really available to public. So what do you think in future, uh, how, how this will affect public job market? So uh, just for an example, like, uh, like through the AI models, when uh, you're on the road, you can basically see if uh, there is a car in front of you or it's a livestock or if there is something, some object in front of you. So uh, this is the decision that basically uh, the model is taking. I wanted to understand more on like how ChatGPT became a, a user tool for everyone. Something like that on the decision making side, uh, not just a answer based LLM, uh, LLM based model. When do you see it coming and how will it affect job market and personal life? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Well, you, thank you for your question. Um, when you look at San Francisco, you already got there, the autonomous cars uh, driving around, hundreds of them, which is basically also a machine learning and AI. So it's built and filled with cameras, sensors, but not only in the cars, but also uh, throughout San Francisco. Otherwise, they can't be autonomous because they have to know where they are going to drive. Uh, and not hail the, hit a building or a person in that uh, in that area. And in this particular field of mobility and the next step in mobility, it will get you smoother, quicker to the end journey, traveling by car or by bike, as we do in the Netherlands, or by scooter uh, or by tuk-tuk uh, in the nearby future to do that in that way. And what you see is that in the Netherlands, people are reskilled who are uh, in different kind of areas of jobs and jobs education to have a look at the machine learning and the different kind of clever traffic lights, as we call them, uh, to be a part of that, to make them clever in that way. So new job opportunities, different kind of job opportunities is still existing at this moment uh, because we got still uh, uh, less people uh, than in India. So different kind of opportunities, different kind of learning um, and the future is already here. It's going faster and faster because as we all panelists said, it is part of our life and it's going to the next step. Thank you for your question. Sanjay, you want to add something? I think uh, it is about uh, intelligence and actuation. So I think the artificial intelligence will give you uh, the intelligence that is needed to take action. But you need some kind of actuator to actually put to take that action. So for example, we do work with call center. But in uh, call center, you know, who is the next person to be called? I think that intelligence will come from the AI. But the automated dialer will actually do the dialing. So you have to make AI as a part of your business process. So if it's a, a car example, self-driving car, you know, the AI will tell that there is an obstruction, but there has to be some motion actuator to take the action which is necessary to, to so that you know, it becomes a complete chain. You have to make AI part of the business process and there will be a physical actuator or some kind of actuator to take the action that is necessary to make that AI practical and useful and really, you know, uh, take the necessary action. Sure. Thanks. So, last question. Yeah. Uh, the panel uh, had a good uh, inputs given at the CXO level. So, what exactly is required at the CXO level? Second was, what are the kind of skill sets which are required? But my concern is, for the next generation, like I speak to my son, he, okay, this is the kind of learning you need to do. And most of the time, the answer is, this will be given by the AI and I don't have to learn. So the question, whoever can address it, the basic skill sets of learning mathematics or writing an article and picking up these things, how do you ensure this continues for the human generation to keep practicing and be a better person for the days and, and, and utilize what AI is going to give in a better way? That is a concern and whatever whoever can answer this. Sure, thank you so much. I think that's very pertinent and practical question. And some of it got addressed uh, when they said that to make food, you will still need people. Robots might not be able to do that. Uh, to, uh, and then also mentioned that uh, the future workforce will need to learn two things. One, how to run the AI uh, systems 
and to uh, be skilled in the uh, skill set that AI cannot achieve. So, uh, Udin, you want to take that question? Forward. Just let me clarify one issue. The problem is the basic systems are running. My education is continuing. So, first to 12th standard, we have the basic things going. The college education is continuing. That is not changing. Now, he feels this particular thing is a waste of time. As a young kid, it's a waste of time. The college thing, I am the college education. So, we are giving him products which say it's easily available. Why are you wasting your time? That's his feeling. It's a good question. I recognize um, the age of your son with the age of my daughter. Um, and we got the same discussions because she throws everything for school with uh, uh, chat DBT. Um, so, the statement is that uh, students in the younger generations going to get more, uh, less educated and less informed. But at the end of the day, um, and that's what you also said, it's about creativity. Because uh, teachers are going to look at, at schools. Now we got, they got a regulation, they are going to ban chip DBT, so nothing is going to be, but I don't know how they're going to check that, if people are, or students are not, uh, or will or not will use chip DBT. But at the end of the day, it's also about creativity uh, and it's about the talent of the students. So you get the information out and back and you will read it. Um, but I still believe in the power of people to have a look at it and think about themselves and have an idea about it for themselves and not take it for granted what they get back from uh, an AI. Uh, so I have a belief in that and I hope you also do that for your children. Basically, tell your son that a very high-powered international panel on AI has certified that in the future, people need to be even better in mathematics and in language than they had to be before. Because I really think that's true. So tell that. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that note, uh, again, uh, thank you, uh, everyone here. And uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You will love the audience. Thank you so much.